In this demonstration, we can see an operator entering the contaminated zone after a nuclear attack in his Swiss NBC Suit 70. Firstly, the operator puts down a sign to mark the contaminated area to let other troops know to stay away from this area. Secondly, he takes out his Geiger counter to take a measurement and to confirm contamination. In this case, the Geiger counter detects a fairly high level of radiation. Finally, the operator starts to take water and soil samples, which can be further analyzed in a lab outside the contaminated zone. It is his job to detect, mark contaminated areas and to take samples for further analysis about the kind and severity of the contamination. This is to warn military forces, civil emergency services and civilians as soon as possible and protect them from any possible contamination. As we can see, the operator is struggling to open up the Ziploc bags for the samples with his thick rubber gloves. It's important for him to stay calm, but still get everything done in the shortest amount of time possible and leave the contaminated zone again. He's very well aware, that operating in the contaminated zone can be very dangerous for him, even though he's completely sealed off from the outside world by his rubber suit. The suit only protects him from getting into direct contact with radioactive dust and against alpha and to an extent from beta radiation, but offers absolutely no protection against lethal gamma rays. The operator starts by taking a water sample, using a pipette and filling up a small glass bottle. This water sample will be further analyzed in the lab later. It would be catastrophic if the groundwater got contaminated. Due to the way the suit is designed, the air exhaled by the operator remains inside the suit. This however leads to a dramatic increase of temperature and humidity especially in the upper part of the suit. The high humidity levels inside the suit make the visor of the suit fog up, restricting the operator's view even more. The field of view through the visor is already quite limited. Combined with the bad view due to the condensation, it makes the work not only physically, but also mentally very demanding. The time the operator is allowed to operate in his suit should be kept at a minimum. There is no way that he is able to drink fluids through his mask, which would allow for a longer operating time in his suit. Next, he will be taking a soil sample. We can again see how the operator is only able to open the bags with great difficulty. Using a spoon, the operator shovels a small amount of soil into a plastic bag. This sample will again be analyzed in the lab later. After a nuclear attack, radioactive isotopes like cesium-137, strontium-90, iodine-131 and plutonium-239 can poison areas for decades. While iodine-131 has a half-life of only 8 days, the one of plutonium-239 is 24,000 years. Before leaving the contaminated zone and bringing the samples to the lab, the operator must decontaminate the box containing the samples. He sprays the box with a mixture of water and soap to rinse off any radioactive particles. It's important that the operator does the decontamination process carefully. After applying the water and soap mixture, he washes off the mixture with clean water. Now the samples can be transported safely to the next lab, where they can be analyzed precisely. Before the operator is allowed to step out of his suit, he himself has to get decontaminated, in order to protect him and his comrades from contamination.